Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session number two on introduction to QGIS as part of the online training program on introduction to remote sensing and geographic information systems using QGIS. Myself, I am Chaitanya, posted as a deputy director at National Water Academy, Central Water Commission, Pune. I am also the course uh, director for this training program. In the first session, you have you had uh, a, an overview of uh, remote sensing and GIS technologies. In this uh, session, we will have a short introduction to QGIS software, and then uh, we will see how to install it on our systems. About QGIS, it is a free and open source geographic information system software which can be used for creating, editing, visualizing, analyzing, and publishing geospatial information. It is available under the terms of general public license. It is an official project of Open Source Geospatial Foundation, which was initiated in the year 2002. And the first version of uh, QGIS was released in January 2009. By open source, we mean that its source code is available uh, freely it can be viewed and modified as per the requirement for performing any specialized task as already stated QJS is an open source software and it is free to use to answer the question why QJS and why not any other uh, GS application software application there are many reasons First of all, uh, it is free of cost. It doesn't uh, cost you anything uh, to use the software and you are free to install as many copies of the software as you want on all your devices. It runs across platforms. It can be installed on all uh, operating systems, whether it is Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And then interoperability, QJS can be, uh, it, it seamlessly integrates with other GS softwares and supports wide range of uh, geospatial data formats, ensuring <coughs> compatibility. Uh, there will not be any compatibility issues. Then it has a very user-friendly and intuitive interface, which makes it very popular among both the GS professionals as well as beginners. The most important point which goes in favor of QJS is its vibrant community support. QJS has an active user community and whenever uh, you are looking for any information or you are stuck up with any issue or problem, help is always just a button click away. Only thing is you have to, uh, you know, you should know where to look for information and uh, how to find appropriate kind of information that comes by practice. Um, then. QJS is constantly developing, uh, therefore you will find newer versions uh, being released almost every month. It never stagnates. There are many sponsors who are uh, sponsoring the development of uh, particular features um, for a particular application. Its uh, plugin architecture allows users and developers to enhance uh, the core functionalities of QJS with a variety of plugins. And then it has extensive documentation, which is available along with training sources. The documentation itself has a training manual along with the training data set. And uh, whenever you are stuck up with any, anything, uh, uh, you can look for this documentation or the training resources or the user forums for a resolution. This uh, training program itself uh, uh, is uh, has been designed uh, devised on the basis of a QGIS uh, training manual and many other online uh, sources. There are many books and uh, tutorials prepared by individuals. We will be referring them as we come uh, to the topics. Then uh, it, QGIS offers a choice between uh, different uh, releases. For example, the latest release which is available for download is 3.34.3 and uh, the most stable uh, latest version which is available which is known as the long term release is 3.28.15. Now it is possible to have both of these versions on the same system desktop or laptop and it is possible to have multiple versions of QGIS installed on Windows. Now let us have a look at uh, download and installation of QGIS software. You can visit this URL qgs.org for download options. QGIS can be installed on Windows operating systems in two ways. 
either using standalone installer or by using the network installer. Using the standalone installer is the easiest way and is suitable for beginners because the number of steps involved is less. However, it occupies more space uh, as the installer file uh, has uh, is very bulky and uh, occupies about 1 to 1.2 GB space. Also, you have to make sure that you, in your C drive, there is at least 3 GB space, free space is available for installation and running of the software. Coming to uh, network installer, OSGEO for 4W, that is Open Space Geospatial Software for Windows Installer, Network Installer. Uh, using this, uh, you can install only the required packages and it is possible to only update the changed components as per the requirement. The number of steps involved is more and it is, suit it is uh, suitable for advanced users. For this training program, we will be uh, starting with standalone installer. We will be installing the latest uh, most stable version QGS 3.28 LTR. LTR stands for long term release. And then for some packages, uh, we will uh, try to make use of the network installer uh, during the course of the training program. It is suggested even though uh, you can have multiple versions of QGS on the same desktop or laptop system, you better uninstall all the older versions and use the three, uh, QGS uh, 3.28 LTR to be specific 3.28.15 uh, only uh, for this uh, training program. It becomes uh, important because uh, uh, apart from the core uh, functionalities of QGS, we will be using Saga or Grass tools for catchment delineation and uh, especially Saga tools in recent time have not been working properly due to lack of official support. Uh, we will see how to overcome such issues uh, when we come to the uh, those uh, when we uh, come to them. Now let us have a look at a demo of downloading and installing QGIS software on your systems. You can type in this URL qgs.org and in the main landing page you will find this option of download now you can click here and where you will find various options for download for windows mac os linux for windows we will be going for the standalone installer and that to the most stable version qgs 3.28 ltr you can click here and then the standalone installer file will start downloading onto your system which will take some time you can have a look at previous releases of the QGS which are still available on the portal. You can also have a look at the documentation consisting of tutorials in QGS training manual as well as a very good document on learning GIS basics titled A Gentle Introduction in GIS. It is not QGIS specific but in general in the introduction it provides a very good conceptual uh, understanding of uh, GIS basics. Uh, I will be circulating uh, this uh, document as PDF uh, in uh, as part of the training material. There are other uh, uh, documents which are available for developers like PyQGIS cookbook, uh, QGIS Python API documentation and all the manuals of QGIS are available for download as PDF files. You can also have a look at uh, various publications on QGIS, books on QGIS which are available in the market and you can also go to the plugin repository we will be covering QGIS plugins some popular plugins we will be covering and then on the last day we will be having separate sessions on QGIS customization using Python so you can explore the portal for various resources and you can join you can join the 
chart uh, user groups, uh, QGIS mailing lists. So let us uh, go back to the installation. Once the standalone installer file gets downloaded onto your system, you can double click it and then follow the steps to install the software onto your system. You can click S when it asks, do you want to allow the app to make changes to your device and then go along with the op uh, default options and by accepting the license agreement. This process will take some time. After completion of installation, you will find a new folder QGIS 3.28.15 created on your desktop from where you can launch your QGIS desktop GIS application by double clicking this shortcut QGIS 3 desktop 3.28.15. Alternately, you can also launch QGIS from your startup menu by typing QGIS and then double clicking this QGIS desktop application. When it is launched for the first time, the QGIS interface should look something like this. You can click on projects in the main menu and then click on new to open a new project, which will consist of a blank map canvas, layers panel, browser panel, the main menu and various toolbars which are available. Now tomorrow in the first session on working with vector data, we will first start with familiarization of QGIS interface and how to make use of Q various functionalities which are available in QGIS. If you see the folder of QGIS uh, 3.28.15, apart from the QGIS installation, GRASS GIS version 8.3.1 and Saga GIS version 7.8.2 have got installed. GRASS stands for Geographic Resources Analysis Support System and Saga stands for System for Automated Geoscientific Analysis. Both of both these GIS uh, uh, softwares have many uh, fun uh, functionality, many tools which are available with them, which can be used in QGIS interface uh, for various performing various kinds of spatial analysis. Also, you will find one shortcut to QT Designer with custom widgets, which is used for customization of QGIS for development of various widgets for uh, for uh, developing plugins. You will also find OSGEO for Windows shell and setup, which is nothing but the network installer. If you double click this OSGEO for W uh, setup, you will uh, launch the network installer. We will make use of this for installation of few packages afterwards. So that is about uh, this session on installation, uh, introduction to QGIS and installation of QGIS, uh, QGIS software on your uh, systems. Uh, tomorrow we will uh, start with uh, working with vector data and we will continue further. Thank you very much.